Hey guys, uh, this is an, an answer. I've addressed this verse before about in First John. <clears throat> By the way, the book of First John, we always look at context to whom it's written and for what purpose. Um, First John is so that our joy may be full. Not to question salvation or to put conditions on it. All right, so uh, this is an example why I stick with King James. Now, King James only is not uh, something that I break fellowship over. But I cannot get on. I, I mean, I tried to explain something in Hebrews to a friend of mine, uh, my son's aunt, and got so angry, I threw it in the trash. I, and, and we got her a new one. I, I can't stand it because I, I couldn't. It completely said something opposite of what it was supposed to say. And this is the same thing here. And I'm going to show you why a lot of people are confused by this. Now, uh, Lordship Sailor, hello, sweetheart. Uh, you've been on my channel a while. You seem to think that I uh, promote sin or something, I guess. I, I'm not sure. No, I'm promoting rest in the finished work of Christ and warn uh, of saved people that do continue to live in disobedience, can suffer loss of reward in some ways. As per 1 Corinthians 3, they can uh, uh, suffer chastisement from our Father and even early death, but not suffer salvation loss. All right, let's see. He, he puts here, 1 John 3, 9, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. Garbage, that's not what it says. Because God's seed remains in them, they cannot go on sinning, again, garbage, because they have been born of God. All right. Now, let me tell you why that's confusing for people. Because this is what the King James Version actually translates to. All right. Um, Whosoever commit a sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. And you know he was manifest to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Okay, so here's the context. In Christ, through the Holy Spirit, there is no sin. Through the obedience of one and his righteousness, we're saved. Okay, not ours. All right. All right. Now, we're going to go down here. Whosoever is born of God. This is what it actually says. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Let me just remind you, the Greek word there is not even once. It means it's not a possibility for a person born of God to sin because he's born of God. Now, if a person gets realistic and honest with themselves, who would say they've not sinned once since being saved? Well, okay, there might be some nut jobs that do it, but let's get real here. Uh, it says, in the same, the same author says, if a person says he has no sin, the truth is an enemy has deceived himself. So why would he say that you can't sin? Okay, because the new man, the Holy Spirit, does not sin. Because it says right here, and in him is no sin. Okay, so when we're trusting Christ, we're not sinning. We're not sinning because the sin is to not trust Christ as the Son of the living God who died for you, was buried, and rose again, as per the gospel that saved us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. All right? So, what it's actually saying here, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. See, positionally, we are born again. That new spirit cannot sin. Can't. Do, I, I want to remind people that the sin problem was taken care of since the foundation of the world, and it manifested in our time space about 2,000 years ago. I, I would really grateful for this uh, uh, recap of your sent me of what he's learned. He's, he's been watching my videos. I'm so touched by it because sometimes I get so frustrated. And he was, he's like free, and he just gets it, and I, I'm actually going to read it to you on another video. Okay, so here, let me take this. We're going over to Romans and Galatians, and I'm going to show you based on one born of God cannot commit sin, to let you know there is an old man and a new one, okay? Remember Paul when he said, uh, uh, you know, basically, don't you know you died with Christ? And that's what water baptism represents, that you died, were buried, and rose again with Christ, okay? So he's telling you your new identity, this old flesh is technically already dead. It was crucified on the cross with Jesus, all right? So why serve that dead thing? Let's serve the living spirit, all right? So with that in context, we know that there's a new man and an old man. Romans 6, 6, 23, 6 through 23. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay, so this is dead. 
all right? Technically, because God's in eternity. This died already, all right? For he that is dead is freed from sin. This is an identity. You remember Peter when he said, Paul says same things, some things that are hard to understand and people rest the scriptures to their own destruction. All right, that's part of it because they're not getting this, all right? Now, and he's saying, now, if we're dead, and we are with Christ, we believe we should also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. He says, now, because this is your identity, the flesh is already dead. Reckon yourself absolutely already dead so that you don't serve that dead thing anymore and begin to serve God through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Do you see this here? All right. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead unto sin. This is an instruction based on the information he just gave you of your new identity, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. These are instructions for already saved people. He's not telling you this to be saved. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Do you see what he's saying there? Reckon yourself dead, your body dead, and only live through that spirit. All right? For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. Okay? All right. There we go. And then he tells you, you know, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves service to obey his servants, ye are whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Is this saying that if you sin, you go to hell? No. What he's saying is when you serve sin, you're serving the devil. And you should serve the one that saved you. You should serve God. All right. There you go. So let's look at Galatians here. Here's another thing about the old man and the new man. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would all right paul even talks about you know the good that i would that i don't the thing that i hate that i do who will save me from this body of death oh wretched man that i am all right so paul himself still had struggles with the flesh because he was human so does one born of god cannot commit sin because when these people put this stuff here what they're saying is uh, you, you, you just don't sin anymore. You don't continue to live in a lifestyle of sin. Okay, well, where's that line? No, it doesn't matter if you sin every five minutes, every five years, you're still sinning. You break one law, you, you broke them all, okay? Because God's standards perfection. We don't establish our own righteousness for salvation. We rest in God's righteousness put on our account. So I wanted to give you this verse in context because it's constantly being used to say say you're a false convert because you still sin you know what you still sin too so shut up it's just ridiculous you know there's sins of omission sins you don't know about strife fear uh, all kinds of stuff it's just crazy when you start looking to yourself for salvation and that's all i've ever done on this channel not to condone sin that's the stupidest it's just that my sin problem was taken care of why, why is that so hard to believe they don't believe the gospel. All right. Hopefully I explain that. All right. Bye-bye.